In this video, we're going to create discussion boards in Canvas. Hey guys, it's Lauren. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to continue this series. We are on video number five. That's kind of crazy. In this video series on everything that K-12 teachers need to know about Canvas. Uh, we're going to be going over discussion boards, which is super exciting because they just came out with some really great new design features. So I'm so excited to show all of that to you guys and so much more. Let's get into this video. so excited to go over discussions with you guys today because I think Canvas discussions are underrated. Most of us are used to the undergrad version of discussions where it's the traditional respond to the prompt, reply to two people, furthering the discussion, and that's just kind of boring. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you three different types of discussion board templates that you can create. The first one being kind of that boring one and then the second two are more exciting and more fun submissions for your students. So we're going to create those templates and then also side note, uh, Discussions got a completely new update and Structure has redesigned how Discussions look which is really exciting so we'll also take a look at that. Let's just click on this first Discussion template here which it's completely blank and empty and we're going to add the content in. So here's an example of a template that I have on my teachers pay teachers store and what I'm gonna do is again just like I did with um, the assignment I'm just gonna copy these instructions and then we are going to start editing this discussion board and we're gonna paste in our instructions here so we'll change the font back to just to that kind of like elementary theming font and we'll add in of course our our colors that we like there we go okay so so we're kind of getting into the nitty gritty. The one thing that I should probably add is the little header. So if I go to my assignment template, edit this, copy, and then paste, and then the theming kind of comes over, insert our line like so. Okay, and then I'm actually gonna add another line in between the instructions and the discussion question section, which I am also going to center this up like so. Okay, and then let's change this to discussion board. So here's our kind of basic instructions. We'll go over those in just a minute. Then there's an option for you to attach a document. So maybe some more instructions. We're just gonna, we don't have anything currently to attach. So we'll just leave it here. Then you have this option. This is new, this is exciting. So here are our options now, which is amazing. So we can either leave it off for anonymous discussion. So students names and profile picture will be visible to all members in the course. We can have a partial anonymous discussion where students can choose to reveal their name or profile picture or we can make it completely fully anonymous and have the students names and profile pictures hidden. I am just going to leave this off for now and then we're also going to select participants must respond to the topic before viewing other replies. I'm only going to do this actually for this discussion board because it is a text response for this one. Then we're also going to select graded. This is super important. This is a super important part because we need to make sure that we can add points and make it a part of an assignment group. This is another really cool thing is we can do peer review. I am going to leave this off, but you can assign them manually. So, you know, making students review each other's posts or you can just do it automatically. Um, and then you get to choose the number of students they review and all of that, but I'm just going to leave that off for now. Uh, and then of course the manage assignment too. This is again similar to the assignment templates that I featured in my previous video. Obviously we can't do this right now because we're in a sandbox course, but when the time comes for us to either assign to a, this one discussion, to a group or to a period or to a few students, this is a great 
great thing that Canvas has added this year and I am loving it. All right, so we'll just click cancel for now and then we'll do save. Okay, so now we can get an overview of this discussion board template. So we have the title, we have you will now complete the, this lesson activity, this lesson activity by reading the instructions and completing the discussion below. To complete the assignment, read all the instructions. Now write a post responding to the discussion questions by selecting reply, read, your classmates posts and respond to two of your classmates posts by and then you kind of have like these behavior discussion rules here's a placeholder for like our discussion questions our prompt whatever what is amazing now and i'll actually I'll go back to this discussion board real quick so you see here i've just made these like silly test responses what's awesome in terms of those like little behavior rules if a student sees something that is inappropriate or you have a ta who's reviewing all of these responses you now can click on the three dots and report this and state why please select a reason for reporting so maybe it's inappropriate offensive abusive other we're just gonna put inappropriate for now and we click submit and this goes directly to the teacher for them to evaluate and it gets flagged. So that's just a really interesting thing that uh, Canvas has added to these discussion boards. But yeah, so how a, a student would reply, they would click the reply button and start answering the questions here like so click reply and then it generates at the bottom we can mark this as unread or mark it as read we can then reply to this so that brings down another little fly box and we click reply and then we start kind of getting this little thread now the other thing that canvas has added which we can't really see here we'll go back here instead is now i can sort these so you can see we right now we have four three two one this was my first response Response. So the newer responses right now are at the top. I can sort it to newest first or I can also sort it to oldest first. So this goes back into test one, two, three, four, which is the original way. Or we can revert it and do it newest first, which is awesome because there it was only oldest to new previously. So I'm really glad that Instructure incorporated this into Canvas. Another thing that Canvas added, but for some reason it's not working on either either one of my discussion boards yet is this view split screen. So you're supposed to click this and then it's supposed to appear like, so this is Instructure's example image. So essentially the instructions, the prompt, everything that the students need to respond to is on the left side. And then all the threads and like posts are on the right side. But as you can see, it's not really working for me at the moment. And I think that's just because maybe I don't have enough responses yet. After doing some more digging, I figured out how the split screen works. So you have to respond or reply to a student's post. So here I am responding, I click reply, and we've got that dual screen side by side. Here's my last little uh, smiley face response reply. And then you can see here, I have both the side-by-side -side view. Then you also have the expand and collapsing of threads, which is another like way to shortcut certain responses. And then the other thing that is new is within the responses, you can actually mention other people. And you can't quite see this in this course, because again, I'm the only person in this course currently. Um, so I can't really like mention myself, but you can mention people within the discussion so students can actually like tag other people within their posts, which is a really cool feature that they've added. The other things that I will point out before creating the next templates is within the three dots over here. So you can mark all replies as read, you can mark all as unread, then you can click on edit. That will take us back to the edit mode. We can delete this. We can close at any time um, this discussion for comments, so meaning nobody can respond to it anymore. We can send this to a colleague. We can copy this discussion board to another 
another course. And then we can also add rubrics, which is great if you are grading. I highly suggest you add a section for replies if you are creating a rubric and attaching it to a discussion board. We have basically gone through the first template. I've given you kind of a tour of all of the new things of the redesign. Now what we're going to do is we are going to go to the home page. We're going to go to our teacher template and we are going to edit this and we're going to type text response. We are going to duplicate this and change this to from text response. We're going to change this to media recording uh, discussion board. So this is a little bit different. So we're going to click on here. We're going to change up the instructions just a little bit. So we'll go to the three dots. We will click edit and we have our, we're going to leave everything at the top the same. Now down here, it says discussion instructions. We're going to change this to read all the instructions, write a post responding. We're not going to write a post this time. Instead, we are going to select this and we are going to insert this instead. So record a video using the media recording feature. So instead of students now responding to, let's say, questions just by typing them, what they're going to do now is we're going to save this and we're going to act as students for just a second. Record a video. We're going to click that reply button and we're going to select the media button, which is right here. So we'll click upload and we're going to click the record option. So this again is super similar to the assignment that we had before. The biggest difference between this and the assignment version, so the discussion versus assignment, is the fact that students are going to get to see this and respond to this video. So of course you should include some specific directions on what you want the students to respond to in their video. I'm just going to test this out real quick. Testing one, two, three. Okay, and then we'll save it. And now what it's going to do is it's going to embed itself directly into this discussion post. So now all students have to do instead of typing everything, they just have to record and then they will click reply. All right, there's my video. I'm clicking the reply button. And now I have my video for everyone in this discussion post to see, view, and respond to, which is awesome. Okay great example of how you can get really creative with this. You can have students record or create video projects and then they submit them to a discussion board and they have to peer review each other's or respond to whoever they want within the discussion board. Such a great option. I did this actually one year during the pandemic when we were all social distancing. I used discussion boards to have students perform the egg drop project at home. So they had to record themselves at home of them dropping their egg somewhere in their house. And it was so much fun to see all of the different videos and have other students watch. I required them to watch at least two and respond to two videos. And so this just gets to be really, really fun and kind of a community builder assignment for your students. So don't miss out on discussion boards. All right, so we have the text response, the media recording. The next type of discussion board we're gonna create is my favorite, so we are going to again duplicate this and I am going to edit it and instead of media recording we are going to make this now a poster project. So we're going to click on here and we are going to edit these directions again. And what I'm going to do instead of record a video, the instruction piece is going to be up to you whether you want your students to create like a digital poster in Canva or on paper or in a Google Doc, right? So it doesn't have to be all digital, but I am going to write, okay, so I've added create a poster either using Canva or paper that follows the direction slash prompt below. So now what we'll do discussion. We'll change this to directions slash romped. And right here will be all of the important things that they have to include on their poster that they're creating. So instead of writing question one and all of that, we'll do step one. So having that placeholder for all the important instructions. But up here, students know that they are going to, they're going to create a poster. Okay, then we will save this because all the settings 
Oh, we're going to do offer the peer review and then we'll click save for that. And now we have this template ready to go. And how it would work is students would now they have the option to take a picture of their little paper. So maybe they actually like hand drew it and they can upload an image or if they created some sort of poster uh, that's digital, I'll do one of my thumbnails. I'll do this thumbnail that I have. And so then they could insert it like so. And then students would have to, oh, I this is my GIF one. That's kind of funny. Actually, this is a great thing. So you can actually get even more creative. This was an accident in disguise, I guess. Um, so you could actually have students create GIFs in Canva that they can actually submit to you canvas that was kind of cool actually so it'll load and then we'll see what it looks like all right it is loaded so i'm just gonna click the reply button okay so now i have my gif poster which is even cooler than just a regular poster for all of my peers in my class to respond to so this just shows you how creative you can get with discussions and then my favorite part is of course the collaboration part students being able to see other student work peer reviewing it furthering discussions and all of that fun stuff. This is also a great place for students to discuss their projects together. So maybe they're in a group, they're collaborating, they can get all of their projects uh, submitted here instead. It's just a great collaborative space and I feel like we're not utilizing these enough in the K-12 space. So I wanted to show you this right here. All right, friends. So those are the three discussion templates. That doesn't mean that, you know, you have to stop here. If you have another creative way of creating um, discussion boards that maybe you want to also share with us, feel free to leave a comment below and let us know how you utilize discussion boards in your Canvas course. But this is a great way to get started in your teacher template. And I'm so excited to finish this teacher template off in the next video where we review quizzes. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you attempt to use discussion boards in your class other than just using Using the traditional assignment. I think they are amazing and they just encourage a lot of student interaction and collaboration. If you found this video to be helpful, I would greatly appreciate if you would like this video and of course subscribe, stick around for a while because I got lots more Canvas content coming your way. All right guys, thanks for watching again and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!